Now then my friends, good morning. It is 7am in the morning and I am at Gatwick Airport. I've literally just landed in from New York's JFK and I want to tell you and give you a prime example of why you shouldn't buy an electric car. Ever, never, ever buy an electric car. This one's an electric car. If you're new to the channel, it's a Porsche Taycan. Uh, if you're a regular to the channel, you'll know I call this thing a milk float and it's absolutely useless. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to get in the car first because I'm absolutely shattered. If you are new to the channel, do hit that subscribe button, click that little bell for notifications of when I upload new videos. And I'll see you in the car. So let's go. Right, my friends, so it is now seven minutes past eight. I've been driving for an hour and I just want to get home to bed because as I said in the intro, I've just flown in from New York into Gatwick and I've now got 139 miles left to go to get back to Mansfield, to the office. I've got 61% of battery left and only 145 miles of range and I know that will drop so I am going to have to go and get some charge on the way back I don't really want to be doing that what I want to be doing is just filling up and going away and you can't because it's going to add another hour easily onto my journey dependent upon whether I'm going to take you with me on whether I can actually get a charger or not whether they're in use whether they're fast charging for instance on the way down before uh, I left for the airport. The day before, I had to go out working, so I was left with no charge. So I got back to the office, plugged it in. It was taking 13 hours to charge from home, from a home charger, uh, my office at home. And then, at, on the evening, I wanted to go to Asda. And I thought, I've got to go and get some stuff from Asda for the trip. But I thought, well, I can't, because that means unplugging my car again, and then that's valuable time that it could be charging. So I ended up walking. Anyway, on the way down to the airport, I set off at 3.30 a.m. It added two hours onto my journey because I had to charge on the way down to make sure that I'd got some charge for when I'm driving back. So I pulled in at a station, service station. Weirdly enough, the chargers didn't charge me. I don't know why. It said these, there's no charge for these chargers. I think they just installed them or something. It was a bit odd. Um, I've no idea why. So anyway, it was Ionity. And um, it just says these are not charging, which is weird. Not, not charging as in charging you money. So I ended up getting uh, virtually a full charge for free, which is great. But it added two hours onto my journey. They weren't that fast a charge. And... That's what I mean. You literally, if you're going on long journeys and you're not doing anything that's roundabout town, etc., these cars are an absolute waste of time. I've done videos prior, so I'm not going to go into everything. It's up, and I've said it's all about control before, etc. Have a look back at some of my old videos. This is just a quick video just to show you basically how much time and hassle and stress that it adds on to your journey. If you're doing things like this and you're coming back off of a holiday, I just want to go back and go to bed. But, and I know somebody's going to say, well, you can go and get a coffee and get your head down in the car for an hour, which I'll probably do, but it's not really what I want to be doing. I want to be back and just go to bed. Um, so you can see that the electric car the EV isn't the future and we're having it pushed down our throats on the television all the time. EV, EV, EV this, EV that. And it basically is we're being guided like lambs to the slaughter because it's just about control. 
I own an electric car, said before, don't buy one, don't get one. They're an absolute waste of space. They're useless. They are completely useless. But anyway, so we're gonna carry on with the journey. Uh, we're gonna see basically how long it takes to charge up and how long uh, at the time it adds on to the journey. So uh, onwards, my friends. Range-wise, by the way, because it's winter, this car will get about 220 miles on a full charge. Whereas in summer, I'll probably get about 290 to 300 miles because obviously the the, the winter, its batteries are better in uh, warmer weather, etc. You're also using the heater more, using the heated seats, which takes the battery up, etc. And it all eats into the battery. But it's like you get cold weather, the batteries don't like it. So as soon as warm weather comes, you do get a better range. So I may just have got there and back if it was summer, but obviously because it's winter, uh, I'm not gonna do. Cost-wise, by the way, now to charge up, if you're charging up on public charges, it is probably slightly more than it is to run a diesel or a petrol car. Uh, I think I charged up the other week, I got, um, I charged up to full from about, I think I was down to about 10% and I charged up to full. And I know people are gonna say, you should only charge up to 80% because then from 80% onwards it's slower charging. But I charged up to full and I think it cost me to get about 200 miles into it, about roughly I'm guesstimating about 46 to 47 pounds for 200 miles, which is not really cheap, is it? So well, we'll see what it is. And they all vary anyway. You're better off charging at home. It is a lot cheaper if you do charge at home. But we're going to find out what it's uh, what it's like today on a public charger and, and I'll also let you know the cost of it as well. So um, there we go. Right, I've got to get, I, I do need a coffee now. I'm, I'm beginning to flag. I'm beginning to flag. I'm getting um, a little tired. I just want to get back. And this is a prime example of why not to have an electric car. It adds undue stress onto a journey, doesn't it? Really? But there you go. Anyway. Back on the road, come on. Oh, and uh, to add to it as well, just to add to it, to the stress, it's now raining because it's the UK. And uh, when I go to charge up, I'm gonna get absolutely wet through if it doesn't stop because there's no uh, canopies over the charges on electric chargers. It's not like a forecourt where you can go in, you're all covered over, you got to you know, fill it with petrol, go in for a coffee, come out again, you're completely dry. No, you walk out, you find the charger doesn't work, you're absolutely drenched, so you have to get back in the car, go to the next charger, see if that one works. See, these are, these are all, it's all undue pressure onto a journey that you don't need and this is a prime example of why not to get an electric car So just out of interest, um, I turned the heater um, off and it gave me an extra 29 miles by turning the heater off in the car. So I thought, oh, maybe I could get, I could just get back if I turn the heater off in the car. But then the window started steaming up and it started getting really cold. And I thought maybe that's probably not a safe thing to do. So I switched it back on again and also um, after I've had a bit of a sleep, I've got to go out this afternoon uh, and go and work, so I can't, I, I need it charged up, so I can't just charge it up back at the office because that'll take too long, so I need to get a charge in the car and I might as well do it now. So I'm going to try and get as 
far back as a can, as close to home as a can. So it goes further down, so the charge goes further down because the lower it gets, the faster it charges. So it's all balancing and you've got to get things right and not charge past 80% and get it lower to charge. It's just, it's garbage really, isn't it? It's just garbage. You want to go into a filling station, fill up and go. There you go, prime example of why not to get an electric car. More stress. have to say you're getting really tired now it's two minutes past nine now then 90 miles of range left and I've got 88 miles to go however it's going to be pushing it as and as I say I need some more charge uh, for later on after I've had a sleep so um, if I switch off just to show you if I switch off these so I've got 90 miles of range if I switch off the air conditioning there now I have 99 miles of range left but my windows start steaming up and it gets really cold in the cabin but that gives you an idea of your heating system taking away your battery on your car and your range it's absolute madness it's crazy so um, I'm gonna put that back on so 99 miles of range switch the heating back on again 91 miles of range there you go so the heating system has an effect on the car amongst other things as well the heated steering wheel which isn't on at the moment and the heated seats etc which aren't on at the moment definitely don't want them don't want to be falling to sleep so there you go lots of things it does have an effect on the range as well but anyway i just want to get charged up as quickly as i can get back on the road and then get back so i can get to sleep so come on onwards Right, so I think we're going to stop at Watford Gap, try and charge up there, 66 miles to go to my destination. We've got 79 miles, but I've turned the heater off here, so it'll be around about, if I put the heater back on, let's have a look. I've just been trying to preserve a little bit of energy. So if I put the heater back on, turn in here to Watford Gap, yeah, 66 miles. 72 miles of range so like i said just about make it but it would go on limp mode uh hang on cars where are we cars here we go watford gap right now i've just got to find the charging points where are they good grief potholes in, in here is insane um where are we i think they might be building new charging points there actually they've got builders in that's unusual right now i need to find the charging points now where are they grid in serve. 300 feet turn left I, I don't think so grid serve ah here we go there's one charging point and there's somebody on it fantastic turn left onto m1 there you go there's somebody on it so one charger and somebody on it okay right right okay we'll go to the next service station i just need to get back i'm absolutely shattered now um let me just try and get out of here and then we'll get back on the road come on mr lorry driver come on mr lorry driver there we go right i'm going to get back on the road again and try the next service station because that guy's literally just pulled up so he's going to be about 40 minutes to an hour so that's no good right so let's get back on the m1 and we'll try the next service station see this is all undo pressure and hassle that i don't need after i've just landed from the airport this is electric cars for you and this is why 
I'm telling you not to buy one because people don't show you this. I used to work in the press and advertising and they'll show you all the glittery and glitzy stuff to do with electric cars and sell them to you. But the reality is they are absolutely useless. Onwards. Right, so I've got 45 miles back to the office, but my range, I've only got 44 miles, so it's gone down. Um, obviously it differs on the way you drive, etc., and whether you've got your heater on and, you know, all the different things in the car. So I, I guess I could turn the heater off. I'm gonna try and hope, fingers crossed, that there's a charger at the next service station that is available uh, that it's working as well because a lot of them are sometimes out of action and these are the issues they're selling these silly cars and the infrastructure isn't there and it's not going to be there this is not the future if this is the future then goodness help us because it's just ridiculous it's beyond a joke i'm absolutely shattered absolutely tired and all i want to do is just get back to bed yeah instead i'm fannying around trying to find a charger to charge the car up there we go welcome break two-thirds of a mile fingers crossed for me i can have a coffee then and charge you up hopefully nobody else is in it if they are i'm just gonna have to wait leicester forest east here we go Right, now I need to find the chargers. Oh no, <laughs> come on. Right, it looks like they're all, they're out of order. Are you having a laugh? You are having a laugh. Please tell me. Right, this is not funny now because I, I'm not gonna have enough charge to get back, so this is absolutely ridiculous this is the reality my friends share this video come and have a look oh. right here you go look here we go here's your chargers so there's two chargers and none of them are working look at this just look at this you couldn't have actually scripted this better, could you? To show how terrible electric cars are. Right, back in the car, and we'll try and find another charger. I'll see you in the car in a minute. Hang on. Oh, dear. I need to switch over to uh, my GoPro. One second. Let's go on that. Right, let's get out of here and get to the next place. And this is the reality of owning an electric vehicle. Now I'm panicking and I'm getting range anxiety because I've not got enough power to get back to base. So there we go. Make sure you share this video, tweet it, just get it out there. And anybody that you know who's thinking about buying an electric car talk them out of it and tell them how stupid and how daft and unrealistic it is to own one of these stupid cars they're absolutely ridiculous there's a filling station there look i could have filled up and been on my way it's absolutely ridiculous there's not enough power there um from from the national grid so there's not enough power on site to run the chargers and then in summer when i was charging they were they were overheating so you couldn't you couldn't use them this is the reality of it right come on onwards my friends this is i just want to go to bed i just want to go to bed
in a way, I'm actually kind of glad that this has happened because I've been an advocate of showing people that electric cars aren't the future. And you've seen me whinge about electric cars before, but it, it's for a reason because I'm wanting, and people say, why don't you get rid of it? I lease it, thank goodness, so I can get rid of it after the lease. But until then, I'm an advocate of showing people that these things are just a joke and we're being led down the garden path by by government saying that the future by advertising campaigns that they're saying that the future it's all a marketing big marketing ploy to get people to buy these electric cars to move on to electric cars to ultimately keep us off the roads that's my that's my view anyway i mean i may be wrong i have to say that but one thing I'm not wrong about is these things don't work. They don't work. The infrastructure isn't there. They're not building enough electric charging points for the infrastructure to work and be there in time for 2030, is it? Or 2035? I can't remember what it is now. I'm so tired. Let me move into this lane. We've got lorries swerving. Um, so, we're being pushed and led down the garden path. But the, the the reality of it is, it doesn't work. And even when you do have the infrastructure there, they're out of order, they're overheating, or they're full up. And you have to wait ages. And the battery technology isn't there. It's an absolute, it's a scam. It's ridiculous. It's just, it's a joke, isn't it? You can see, I couldn't have scripted this any better to show you guys how useless EVs and electric cars are. Unfortunately, I was hoping that I hope the next, in fact, if the next service station one isn't working, then I'm going to have to call the AA to come and give me some charge because I, I'm running out. And this is all undo strat. I just want to go to bed. Anyway, you've got to laugh about it, haven't you? You've got to giggle. Onwards. Now, I've just tried to overtake a car there to get out of the way of a lorry pulling out. And because there's not enough power in this car now, we're down to like 41%, the car goes into like a limp mode. This is a Porsche, by the way which is supposed to be a sports car, and it's going into limp mode. So I'm trying to accelerate, but it's not got any power because it's trying to preserve the battery. So there's another downside to it. Obviously, if it was a petrol car and you had 40 miles, you'd be fine. It's, that'd be absolutely fine. No, these things go into limp mode because it starts to try and save and preserve the battery. There you go. Now, I'm not going to go to Donington Services because it's an... Oh, here we go. Police check range. That's popped up. I'm going to try and make it to Trowel, which is the next one, because Donington, you have to get off, go on a different road, over towards the airport, and I don't want that. So I'm going to try and make it to Trowel. It's just popped up with police check range. 36 miles left. I'm going to turn the air conditioning off. Um, that's it took the range up a little bit up to 40 so I'm now going to turn it's steaming up a little bit and it will go cold in the cabin eventually but we should be all right so heaters off air conditioning's off fingers crossed we'll get to trowel and we should be all right um, if trowel services charges are working if they're not then I'm, then it's game over I'm gonna to have to call the AA because they've got a diesel generator that'll just charge your car up. Ironic, isn't it? A diesel generator. Who would have thought it? <laughs> if this doesn't stop you buying an electric car, I don't know what will. I couldn't have written the script for this better. This is the reality. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right. Uh, see, I'm trying. I've got my foot to the floor now, and the car's not 
come on, it's not going anywhere because it's on limp mode. <laughs> right, the car's now limited to 60, so I'm in the inside lane and it's limited itself to 60 miles an hour to preserve battery uh, and range, etc. So I'm hoping I'll make it to hoping I'll make it to travel services and they have some charges available. If somebody's on them, then I'm just gonna have to wait and sit there and wait. It's now 10.13 and I pretty much probably could have been, I could have been back by now or in about five, 10 minutes if I'd have had a car with fuel, petrol, instead of trying to look for charging points. I guess if you've got an electric, I guess electric cars, if you're just tootling around town and you've got a charging point at home and you, you know, you don't really use your car for anything but, you know, whipping around town or going down to Asda or whatever, then I guess they kind of work. But for an actual real car on a day-to-day -day basis, this does not work. And it's a long time off working. I personally think my view is we are being sold a lie and there's more to it there's way more to it come on travel i need this service station i need this service station come on Right, okay, so I know where they are here and they're, are they all taken up? Let's have a look. Come on, please be spare. Please have one spare. Please have one spare. Please have one spare. Please have one spare. What's this guy doing? Is there a spare one? I think there might be a spare one. Here we go. Come on, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, I think there might be one spare. Let's hope it works. Now I've just got to hope it works. Right, I've got a warning symbol on there. So, grid serve. Um, right, let's go and do this. Please work. Is it all right? I'm hoping it is. Right, come on. Oh. Oh. Right. Let's try and do this. Here we go. Right, so let's first check the condition of the connector. So click start. Right, now tap your contactless card. Starting, verification successful. Okay, I think, welcome dual charging event. You're, author you're authorized to charge, please connect. And I know I'm over the line there, but I couldn't get too close to that guy there. So I'm only, I'm only going to need a little bit of a charge. So I'll wait around here. Somebody should be able to get in there anyway, right? Oh, hang on a minute, error. Error. Start. I don't know what it's doing. Making a noise, but no. Start. Dual charging. Oh, it says it's charging now. But I don't know what the error thing was. So it's charging. This is absolute madness. Right, I'm going to go to the use the little boys' room. 
uh, and then see whether we can get enough charge in it just to get back and then I'll charge somewhere around there or somewhere else. This is crazy. It's 59 kilowatts a second. So we're at 11 percent. It's now it's now 1024 and we're at 11 percent. So remember that. I'll see you in a minute. Right, it's been charging uh, 12 minutes now. 10.35, got myself a Krispy Kreme, got myself a Costa coffee. Cost you a fortune in coffee and donuts when you've got an electric car. It's 26% charged, um, it's 65p per kilowatt, we've, we've used 50, 60 kilowatts now, so you can work you can work out the price yourself. Because um, it doesn't actually tell you the price at the end, you have to go online onto a web page, put your credit card in, and then it tells you what it is. It's uh, it's not the best, best way to uh, find out how much is, it's costing you. So we'll give it another five, 10 minutes. I'm absolutely shattered. I don't want to get back on the road and get to bed. So I'm going to have to cancel what I was doing this afternoon, put that off till tomorrow and just charge it back at the office, uh, back at base overnight. It, you can't, it's just, it's, it's just absolute madness. It just, it really is. You cannot run your life with an electric car. It's, it doesn't work. The, who, who's, who actually thinks that this is realistic it's madness anyway i'm going to enjoy my donuts i'll see you in a minute and my coffee right i'm going to stop this now we're at 32 percent i'm cold i'm tired um and i just want to get back and go to bed now so i think i've proved a point um <laughs> honestly I, I couldn't have scripted that better to show you if you really are thinking of buying an electric car please let this be a lesson and don't do it. Please do not do it for your own sanity and your own good. It's all absolute codswallop. That's what it is. 32% yeah, here, look. Press stop. 59 kilowatt, 65p per kilowatt. Okay, that is all from me today. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and do me a favour, share this video on social media, tweet it, put it on EV forums, tell your friends about it. Just don't let them fall for this absolute madness. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. What a load of crap. Garbage. Oh yeah, by the way, that's given me 86 uh, miles of range now. Um, that will get me back to the office. The guy next to me, by the way, charging, I spoke to him. He's been there an hour. He says it's gonna take another 50 minutes to give him a full charge. That's an hour and 50 minutes he's been at the service station. And I think you can only stay two hours before you get fined. So he's gonna have to leave before then. It's good, isn't it? Electric cars. It's brilliant. <laughs> right, so I'm back at the office. I've just plugged the car in just to give you an idea. It's quarter to 12 now that I've got back and I've just plugged it in and it will be charged. Are you ready for this? At 12 minutes past 10 tonight. 12 minutes past 10. So this car's pretty much out of action now all day. Excellent. See you later.